and welcome to this beautiful day God has made and has given us the privilege to enjoy and to share. And I truly say it's a beautiful day in the neighborhood to be sure. It's just so good to have the privilege to be here in Antioch this morning. Antioch, the United American Bureau Baptist Church here in the fast city of Kinston, North Carolina, USA. And we just thank you for those who joined us this morning. We bless God for you having you and those who are joining us with, across the various mediums that you have to share. We're just thankful that we're still communing together. Because we're not gathered together face to face, does that mean we're not still joined in heart and joined in spirit? So we bless the Lord for that and give him honor and the glory. I do honor God, my Heavenly Father, and I thank him for his good and perfect gift. His Son, our Savior, our Redeemer, and our Lord, Jesus the Christ. And I thank Him for the indwelling presence and power of His Holy Spirit, the Holy Ghost, leading us and guiding us in the way that we should go, convincing us and convicting us that Jesus Christ is Lord of all. I do honor in His absence the Elder Gregory Stephen Message, pastor of this great church, I honor the officers, members, visitors, supporters, and friends who yet continue to support Antioch and say thank God for you that we're on the battlefield together. All to whom honor and recognition are due, we honor and we recognize you in the name of Jesus. My brothers and sisters in the ministry, thank God for your strength. Thank God for your perseverance. Thank God for your stamina to remain on the wall for such a time as this. In the name of Jesus. Lift up your heads in the sanctuary and bless the Lord, the Lord that made heaven and earth, bless thee out of Zion. All oh, that men will praise the Lord for his goodness and for his wonderful works to the children of men. For he satisfies the longing soul and filleth the hungry soul with goodness. Blessed is the man that trusteth in the Lord whose hope the Lord is. For the Lord is good. His mercy is everlasting, and his truth endureth to all generations. As we extend this call to worship, join with us in singing our opening song this morning, Blessed Quietness. If you have your hymnal nearby, it's on page 106, Blessed Quietness, excuse me, on page 122. Joys are flowing like a river since the comforter has come. He abideth us forever. Make the trust in Like the rain that falls from heaven. 
Thank you, God, for the beauty of this wonderful day you have created for us all, Lord. And we just thank you, you have given us another privilege, Lord, to come to your house of worship. We honor you, we praise you, and we say, God, we love you. Thank you, Father God. It's not enough to say, but we say with glad hearts, God, My thank Lord. you for this day. Thank you for oh, those yes. who are in this service this morning, Father God, who press their way that they, yes. that they be in the service one more time. My Lord. Holy Spirit, you are welcome in this place. Yes, Abide Lord. with us. Guide us. Yes. Lead us along yes. the way. Thank you right now, Father God, for your blessing that shall come Thank from this you. service, God. Thank the you. The words of our mouths and the meditation of our hearts, may they be acceptable in thy sight. O oh Lord, our strength and our redeemer is our prayer. Blessed Wildness, Holy Wildness, what a true Oh. 
always he with us. We thank God for our family with Mother Mumford and Mother Simmons in the service this morning. And we're always thankful for Brother Lee Williams and Brother Jaden Williams for being in the service of the Lord. And we thank God for your presence. And again, those of you across the various speakers, however you joined us this morning, we thank God for you in the name of Jesus. And it's just so wonderful that we have this blessed quietness because of who Jesus is. We're so thankful too that because he lives, all things that may seem undoable, they can be done. We put our trust in him. Amen. And so that brings us to our, 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 our first hymn, our morning hymn, Because He Lives. Now the hymn will be like that. Mine is from page 106 if you want to find, if you want to join with us. But it's such a favorite one and a favorite one. You know the words, I'm sure, already. And we give God the glory. God sent his son, they called him Jesus, he came to love. Oh, the future. 
Hallelujah. What a word that we heard in some song this morning. Thank you, God. There are many who would love to be here. It is a gift of God, not of works, that any man 
should boast. Mm -hmm. For we are his workmanship, yeah. created in Christ Jesus unto good works, which God has before ordained that we should walk in them. Mm -hmm. O oh Lord, my God, mm -hmm. when I in awesome wonder mm -hmm. consider all the world thy hand hath made, wow. I see the stars. Yes. I hear the rolling thunder. Yes. Thy power throughout the universe display. Then sings my soul, yes. my Savior God, to thee. How great, how great thou art. How great. How great mm -hmm. thou art. Then sings my soul, mm -hmm. my Savior God, to thee. How great thou art. Wow. How great thou art. Mm. Merciful, loving, restoring, redeeming, renewing, resurrected God our Father. Thank you yet again, Lord, for the privilege to call upon your righteous and your holy name here at your holy hill of this your holy day. Thank you, Father, for a man made up to live for you. Thank you for faith to walk with others who have given themselves to you, to your keeping and your care. And thank you right now, Father God, for the strength to carry on to continue forward. And as we gather here today, God, for this service of worship, it is indeed, God, that's what we do. We worship you from the rising of the sun Jesus. unto the going down of the same. Yes. And God, we thank you. So many things have come and gone. So many people have come and gone. Mm. And Lord, it's not going to Hallelujah. stop now. It shall continue should you tarry. Jesus. And because, God, we have our instruction to continue the work, to work while it is day. So that when you come, Father, you will call us home to our eternal home in peace with you. Thank you for Antioch, God. Thank you for Antioch. We praise you yes, for Lord. the work that yes, continues, Lord. Father, that goes on because we honor you still, Lord. My Lord. Our place will not always be here. My there will Lord. be others who will come forth. And we thank you, God, for the privilege to prepare them as we have been prepared to carry on what must needs be done. Thank you right now, Father God, for your healing grace and mercy, God, for those who are infirm in the bodies, God. You know it all, Lord. And all we just God. say, you are with them in spirit. Oh. So we're not sending you anywhere, God. You're already here. My so Lord. just say, have your way. My Lord. Have your way. Heal. Make whole, do Jesus. Comfort, strengthen is our prayer, and we give you the praise yeah. God for the great and wonderful and kind things that you are yet doing. Thank you for remembering our family and our loved ones. Yes, Lord. Thank you for remembering our city, God, our, our county, yes, our, our nation, our world, Lord. That we indeed continue to look to you, to the hills which cometh our help, Lord, mm. and our help cometh from the Lord who made heaven and earth. Go with us and. Stand by us, Lord, and we'll be so ever careful to give your name the praise. We don't always know what to ask for, Father, but in that sweet hour of prayer, we can ask you and we can rest assured that you hear us because we do it with sincere heart. In the name of Jesus, we just say thank you for all the shelter you've done in this day. Thank you. Your glory. In the name of Jesus Christ, we hope you say by the presence and power of the Holy Ghost. We pray and we say, Amen. 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 Pray for me. Pray for me. Oh, my brother. Pray
We just thank you right now, Father God, for your goodness, for your grace, Amen. and for your mercy. Amen. For that more. Hallelujah. Mm. There is power in the name of Jesus. Oh, yes. There oh, is yes. power in the blood of Jesus. Oh, yes. Our next inspiration here is just that. There is power in the blood. My Lord. The handbook that I have it from is on page 137. If you may, you may have a different one, just go to the table of contents and just find. Oh, you know, we sing it all, we sing it all the time. There was power in the blood. Thank you, God, for hearing our prayer. Thank you, God, for hearing our prayer. Would you be free from the burden of sin? There's power in the blood. Power in the blood.
how wonderful it is to, to be with you on this beautiful morning. It's kind of overcast out. It seems like it'll get clouded and the clouds will roll back and, and then they'll come back again. But that's all right too because it's springtime. And we're the death like that in the springtime, making the transition. But the beauty of it all is that we're here to witness it. Milo. To witness it. The pollen has been washed out one more time. And I think it's just about over yet because looking out in the yards, those little tassels from the pecan tree, they are, uh, they're coming down and the little new a pine cone, little birds on yes. the pine cone tree, they start to come out too. Yes. So yes. we have uh, just a little while longer, but they're doing in the fullness of time. Okay. And every season, they're doing what God has so created them to do. And we just continue to go forward. We do what we can to keep ourselves protected, wearing our masks. Your feelings about that are personal, but know that there is healing in doing what needs to be done to protect yourself Amen. and others as well. Amen. And it is a tremendous consideration. So let us do our part to be helpful, to be neighbors, to be friends, to be soldiers together, to do the right thing, to do the right thing. We're just so thankful as we continue to say that during our service of worship at this point in time, we would have uh, we would have our, our, our morning announcements and our welcome. And being that this is, <coughs> excuse me, the second Sunday we celebrate is our youth church Sunday. We do extend to the youth of our church. Uh, they will come forth and, and just share with us the, the things that they are working on, the goals they set for themselves. <coughs> excuse me how things are going in school in their lives and all, and we give them an opportunity to, to, to share with us. And we always say that we are here to support them, to, to prepare them as we were prepared yes. uh, for a life that is sure to come. Yes. Sure to come. Yes. And realize that we have options, good, bad, and different, but we pray that you will make the right decisions yes. based on the, 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 the training that we receive in the Word of God and how we learn to, to, to love our neighbors as ourselves. And so at this time, we send the AFWBC, the Antioch Free Will Baptist Church, shout out to the youth. Endeavor to persevere. Yes. Moving on up. Yes. And the school year has definitely been a different one, but learning has not stopped. Living has not stopped. No. There is guidelines again that we must be obedient to, to make the best of it, to reap the best benefits from it. Amen. And so we say to Jaden, to Jaquela, to Odyssey, to yes. Martin and to Morgan, endeavor to persevere moving on up. And today we'd like to encourage you with uh, these words of wisdom that were sent to me by a cherished friend. And the title of it is, Yesterday, Today, and Tomorrow. And it reads, Thank you, Lord, for yesterday. Thank you, Lord, for leading the way. Thank you, Lord, for tender care. Today and tomorrow, we know you are there. Thank you, Lord, for every plight. Thank you, Lord, it will turn out right. Thank you, Lord, for yesterday, today and tomorrow, Lord, leading the way. And it is by Edna McMaster Miller, if I, correct it, if I pronounce it correctly. But the scripture encourages us. One generation praises your deeds to the next and proclaims your mighty works. We are the generation proclaiming the deeds of God to the children. They become the generation proclaiming the word of God among themselves, and then as they mature and they grow older, to those who will come after them. So we're preparing them, and we salute them. We salute them. We salute them. As they endeavor to persevere, keeping moving on up. God is better than good. Same God back in the day is the same. God today and will be the same God tomorrow. Amen. Every day. Amen. Every day. Yes. And every day knowing Him is a day of thanksgiving. Yes. And so we prepare now to bring with you what God has given to me, brought to you. And prayerfully it will be, well, I know that it will be a blessing because God's Word does that. It blesses, it restores, it renews, it strengthens. And we're just thankful for how he sent it to us and the way he sent it to us. And there are times when there's like a, uh, uh, what is on, on the um, the radio or on the the, the phone, or different things you push repeat, you know, go back and, re um, and re repeat yourself. But every time we read this Bible church, it is a repeat. Because from the first word in Genesis to the last word in Revelation, yeah. 
One is supporting the other. Amen. It's supports the other. It's, all, it's always there. It's Amen. like that commercial that I think that Prango sauce is in there. Yes. It's in there. All we have to do is just go to the word of God. Yes. And search it and pray. And he will. He will enlighten our understanding. Amen. Because he wants us to be the very best that we can be. Very. For his glory. And very. that we're not just looking out for ourselves, but we're looking out yes. for one another. Yes. And that's the beauty of Antioch Ripple Baptist Church. Amen. I'm partial to my church, and I know others who you have their church who thank God. But Antioch is dear to my heart in Jesus' name. So, as we prepare to receive this message for this morning, we just ask God to be with us, Lord. We know that you are. Lord, you kept us through the night. There were times, Lord, when we were Speaking personally, we were checking and making sure that everything was okay. And that even having to walk the floor 3.30 in the morning, making sure that everything was okay, you give me the strength. My and I Lord. thank you for the strength, Lord. Your word is my strength. My Lord. The passion for your word is my strength. Yes. And yes. I thank you right now, Father. Not only blessing my family, but blessing families everywhere. Yes. We trust you, God. We know no other. And we love you. No other. No we love you, Father. And as this word goes forth, we pray that every ear that we hear will know that it is the Spirit speaking to the church. And that every heart will receive your word, Father God, and plant it. Now, especially this springtime season of planting, the symbolism. So that it will grow to your honor, to your glory. That it will beautify our souls. It will beautify our world as we share you with each other. In Jesus' name, we pray and we say, Amen. Amen. God sent his son. They called him Jesus. He came to live, heal and forgive.
People are getting their gardens ready. Yeah. I've been turning around in my yard, mm -hmm. looking at the flowers that are coming up and you know, going somewhere and buying some of those marigolds. Those mm -hmm. two we put out the, the, uh, the uh, geraniums right now. Uh, mm -hmm. We'll just wait and see. Those. April County has some surprises for us too, so yeah. we'll just go forth from there. But, but everything mm -hmm. is just opening up to the glory yes. of God. A season of harvest, a season of thank you, Lord. My Lord. Riding back and forth down that highway between from Kissing to Winterville mm -hmm. and seeing just in a week's time mm -hmm. how the trees are just popped. Uh -huh. Yes. And the new budding. Yes. When they begin to first unfold, it's a real, real light green. Uh -huh. And as they continue to grow, the color goes deeper and it's just yes. so beautiful. Yes. Right people down the highway, all this time. My mom said, trees is dead. I said, Mama, no, they just got, they're just sleeping right now. They get ready to put on their fine spring and went out for uh -huh. fine spring or something out there, so just wait and see. Uh -huh. And so we're out there, so see, Mama, look, 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 right there, see, that's, yeah. that, that's a little outfit right there. Uh -huh. But everything, church, is amazing. Mm -hmm. No matter how cold, no matter how wet, that's no right. matter how stormy, mm -hmm. the first flat boomers come up. Yeah. And no matter what month Easter is in, mm -hmm. it's all at the time of celebrating Jesus' of resurrection yeah. from the dead. Mm -hmm. No matter what month, March or April, there always blossoms in the fullness of time. My Lord. Thereby, we know that farmers know that before they reap a harvest, if you will, mm -hmm. they must first plant. And then they have to care for the growing plants. Yeah. Whatever crop, whatever the plants, whatever it is. They know that this process does not happen overnight. No, it does. You see, this action, if you will, is a commitment of mm -hmm. uh, time and patience. Yeah. Lord have mercy come both without patience. Mm -hmm. Time and patience. You see, I too give personal attention to the blessing I wish to harvest. For the blessings I want most are relationships, love and understanding, mm -hmm. health and well-being, blessings that last for a lifetime. Yes. These and other blessings require time to take root yeah. and grow and mature in me and in the people around me. Yes. The nourishment for these relationships comes from the eternal spring of God's spirit within. Mm -hmm. And then church, in glorious resurrection power, thank you God, the beauty of God's spirit itself <clears throat> showing itself mighty, showing itself strong as expressions of life, of love, and of the will. Mm -hmm. Expressions of life, of love, and goodwill. If you will just kindly open your Bible with me to the Old Testament book of Isaiah, chapter 6. Mm. Isaiah, chapter 6. Call your attention to verses 1 through 8. Isaiah, chapter 6, Old Testament. Call your attention to verses 1 through 8. Because he lives, I can face tomorrow. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Because he lives, all fear is gone. Mm. Because I know he holds the future. Yes, he does. Life is worth the living. Because, yes. oh. just because, he lives. It's a time to plant. It's a time to reap. Lord have mercy. Isaiah chapter 6. Reading from the King James Version of the Bible, the word of our Lord reads, In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw also the Lord sitting upon a throne, high and lifted up, and his train filled the temple. Above it stood the seraphim. Each one had six wings. With twain he covered his face, and with twain he covered his feet, the twain he did fly. And one cried unto another and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. Mm. The 
The whole earth is full of his glory. And the post of the door loomed at the voice of him that cried, and the house was filled with smoke. Then said I, Woe is me, for I am undone, because I am a man of unclean lips, and I dwell in the midst of a people of unclean lips. For my eyes have seen the king, the Lord of hosts. Then flew one of the seraphim unto me, having a live coal in his hand, which, we had, which he had taken with the tongues off the altar. And he laid it upon my mouth and said, Lo, this hath touched thy lips, and thy iniquity is taken away, and thy sin heard. Verse 8, also I heard the voice of the Lord say, Whom shall I send? And who will go for us? Then said I, here am I, send me. Here am I, send me. I was subject for this post-Easter service is resurrection power. Resurrection power. Trees and crops and seeds and prophets share at least one important characteristic. Mm -hmm. That being, they are all planted for the future. Think about it, church. <clears throat> you do realize that seedlings are often overlooked. And indeed, throughout teaching from God's word, prophets are also often ignored. Isaiah is recognized as one of the most, one of the best two examples of this. For the people of his time could have been rescued by his words. But instead, they refused to believe him. Now, my study sources teach me that Isaiah was acting as a prophet during the reign of five kings. King Uzziah, King Joseph, King Ahaz, King Hezekiah, and King, King Sennacherib, five kings. But he didn't set out to be a prophet. For by the time King Uzziah died, Isaiah may have been established as a scribe in the royal palace in Jerusalem. Now, it was a respectable career, but God had other plans for his servant. And Isaiah's account of God's call leaves him little doubt about what motivation moved this prophet to action for the next 40 or 50 years in the resurrection power of the Lord Jesus Christ before God came and raised him from the dead. Uh, walk with me, church. As we set the historical stage here, the year that King Isaiah died was approximately 740 B.C. Remember his story? You know, he was afflicted with leprosy yes. and he remained a leprous until he died because he tried to take over the high priest duty. Yes. God yes. said, don't touch this. This ain't your business. Yes. This is not your responsibility. Leave it alone. You can read all about that in 2 Chronicles chapter 26, at verses 18 to 21. Now, although Uzziah was dimly a good king, he was a long and prosperous reign. Many of the people turned away from God under his reign. Now keep in mind that the geographical background has nothing to do with this lesson. It's anywhere in the world. It's as wide as the world. What's happening there is happening here. It's happening there all around, even in this day. You see, historically, we have had to deal with the conditions of social religious, <clears throat> moral, and spiritual corruption prevalent at the time of Isaiah. Now, I submit to you that the prophet Isaiah <clears throat> is remembered more for his vision and conception of God than it is for his prophetic condemnation of the people's sins. In other words, he, he will be, and, and, and our lesson with this point, it shows how he saw God and how he was chained by God, and how he committed himself to being God's prophet, saying, here am I, send me. Yeah. 
Yes. The foundation of today's lesson has four points. Vision, humility, forgiveness, and dedication. Now it is my prayer that whosoever will hear with the spiritual ear, whosoever will prepare the soil of the heart to receive the seed of God's word, whosoever will give special attention to the blessings you wish to harvest, for, for a glorious resurrection harvest of eternal life with God in the name of Jesus Christ and for his sake by the power of the ever-present Holy Ghost. Four points. Talking about resurrection power, vision, humility, forgiveness, and dedication. Point number one, vision. As we read in verses one and two, we realize that Isaiah's vision was his commission to be God's messenger to his people. Yes. Isaiah he was given a very difficult mission because he, excuse me, because he had to tell the people who believed that they were blessed by God that God indeed was going to destroy them because of their disobedience. Yes. Let us be mindful now. When God called Isaiah as a prophet, he did not encourage him with predictions of great success. God does not do that to us. No, he, he, will, he, he will get the lead us into the way that we should go. Yeah. But God told Isaiah that the people would listen, but not learn from his page, not learn from his message, because their hearts had become hardened beyond repentance. Lord have mercy. A hardened heart beyond repentance. And God's patience with their chronic rebellion was finally exhausted. And his judgment was to abandon them in their rebellion and hardness of heart. Let's be mindful how we harden our hearts, church. Now, Lord. Be mindful how we harden our hearts. Yes. But even so, Isaiah was to speak yes. and write his messages anyway. Mm -hmm. Because eventually some would listen. You don't leave anyone out. You don't dismiss everybody because of what some others are doing. That's but right. But someone would listen. So God can <clears> add <throat> people. Lord have mercy to a tree that would have to be cut down so that a new tree could grow from the old, old stump. You know, John chapter 15 teaches us about this God's pruning in this growth period. Resurrection power is a lesson in the relationship of God to Israel, a loving father to a disobedient child, if you will. You see, God loved Israel from the very beginning, and he had planned great things for Israel because he saw great possibilities in Israel. You know, the same way that a father, a mother, a guardian, a caregiver, a pastor, a teacher sees unfolding talent in their children, especially the children, family members, youth in the community, church members, and who set themselves to do all they can do to help the children develop into well-trained, self-disciplined adults. For even in Egypt, God saw the possibilities of his child Israel, and there began training for the future. Training for the future. Vision for the future. You see, Proverbs chapter 22, verse 6 teaches us, train up a child yes. in the way that he should go. Amen. And when he is old, he will not depart from him. Thank God for <clears throat> us who have a teachable spirit. Yes. Thank God for a teachable spirit. And that brings us to point number two, humility. Humility. Vision, humility. Isaiah is one of the few men in history who seem to have looked right into the face of God. He sees a throne, and on it the Lord high and lifted up. And suddenly there burst on him clouds and clouds of smoke and fire through <coughs> a highly emotional <coughs> ceremony, a vision of the Almighty Himself. And the whole earth is full of his glory. Yeah. Imagine that church. Mm -hmm. Just just think that even to Moses in the burning bush. The way that God has shown himself mighty to us. And he has indeed done that because we are his children, because he has strengthened us because of our faith in him. But revealing, but seeing the Lord in all his glory, a vision of the Almighty himself. Isaiah tries to describe his experience, 
but his words fail. But the fire and the light and the holiness and unspeakable glory of his awesome vision has remained. It is still glorious for those many of us many centuries later. Same God back then, same God right now. Somehow, in one way or another, such visions have come to, <coughs> to, <coughs> excuse me, please. <coughs> such visions have come to consecrate men and women. They're those that God will speak to. He speaks to all of us. Yeah. And they're those that he will use for a greater work yeah. in terms of being more visible for a great amount of people. Yeah. But he speaks to all, both to men and women. Somehow they have become more aware of the reality behind the ceremony, you know, behind the symbolism. See, God becomes real, high, and lifted up above all other human experiences, perfect and unearthly in his holiness and in his glory. Well, these men and women have met God face to face. And indeed, it is both a wonderful and a terrible moment at the same time. And their lives are changed in a twinkling of an eye forever. Changed forever. You've changed since you met Jesus. You've Amen. changed forever because Amen. you have met the Lord God, Almighty Jesus Amen. Christ. It is truly a majestic moment in time to behold God in his glory. And I, I, I just, Lord have mercy, just standing on the back porch at night, and looking up at that sky and the stars and, and seeing the moon, watching the sunrise and watching the beautiful sunsets go down, God in his glory, in his natural world, to see the birds, the beautiful blue jays and the red robins and the little squirrels that are jumping on your porch and dig down in your flowers, the wonderful creation of all God, the might and the majesty of God. I just thank God how he shows his might to us through his creation especially. Giving us wonderful resurrection power, new life, new growth, new beginnings in the name of Jesus. The throne and the attending seraphim, the threefold holy, 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 stressed God's holiness. Now, my study sources teach me that seraphim are a type of angel whose name is derived from the word for burn perhaps indicating their purity as God's ministers, as God's servants, motivated to action, motivated by obedience, motivated by gratitude, motivated by gladness. We're motivated by gratitude that God has given us the strength to come here and be a part of this service this morning. We're motivated by humility that God has allowed us one more day, one more day of love. One more earth. day. I submit to you the joy of the angels the seraphim lies only in obedience to God's will. And when we are fully obedient to God's will, then we know that joy, that peace that passes all understanding. We know that joy unspeakable. You see, Jesus was at Calvary for the purpose of this resurrection harvest. Can you imagine one of those angels in the presence of God refused to serve God because their feet were hurt or I've been, been around this throne 24 hours. I haven't slept. Can you imagine? Can you imagine? Can you imagine someone refusing to do what God has so created them to do? How then can any professing Christian, any professing Christian, think it is okay to sit on the spiritual sidelines wow. and watch others do the work of the kingdom? Mm. Be not deceived. There is no such thing as spiritual unemployment. Was yeah. to retire in the kingdom of God. No. Walk with me, church, for just a little while. Jesus Christ was the perfect servant. His greatness to his seeing in the loneliness he was willing to experience in order to serve the most basic needs of his 12 friends, you know, his disciples. We are familiar with the examples, the lessons, the trials of the suffering servant. And church, everything that happened Every word that was said, every deed or plan that was plotted, Jesus knew before he said, Amen. Father, prepare me a body. I'll go and redeem the world yes. and will die by crucifixion to redeem the world to you. This suffering servant, this was the purpose of Isaiah's call to action to call Israel, the, the nation of Judah, back to God 
and to tell of God's salvation through the Messiah. See, it's already, it's, it's already in place. It's already working. Stages of development coming forth. The Old Testament is the foundation by which the New Testament is actually fulfilled, and we give God for it. Everything, I'm telling you, everything from the first word in Genesis to the last word of Revelation, it all comes together, and that beautiful story is told. My Lord. Thank you, Father God. Thank this you. was the purpose of Isaiah's call to action, to call Israel, the nation of Judah, back to God and to tell of God's salvation through the Messiah. Do you serve on that church committee? Lord have mercy. With gladness or with gloom? Do you serve your neighbors willingly or reluctantly? Mm. Do you, do your children get the impression that you are serving God? Is something that you really enjoy or something you really, who is something that you really endure? Mm. These questions are not new to you, Antioch. We share them many, many times before. Can you serve your boss and others at work, helping them to succeed and be happy, even when they are promoted and you are overlooked? Can you work to make others look good without envy filling your heart? Can God minister to the needs of those who can can you excuse me minister to the needs of those whom God exalts and men honor and you yourself are neglected? Can you pray for the ministry of others to prosper when it will cast yours in the shadows? Well, as a Christian, move to action for the resurrection harvest in the discipline of service. The lesson is not always how well you serve, but even the world serves when there's if it leads to profit. But Christians serve with humility because yes. it leads to Christ likeness. Yes. Which brings us to point number three. Yes. Forgiveness. Vision. Lord have mercy. Humility. Thank forgiveness. In verses five and seven, we are enlightened how the encounter with God permanently affected Isaiah's character. You see, seeing the Lord and listen to the angels, Isaiah realized that he was unclean before God, mm -hmm. with no hope of measuring up to God's standards of holiness. Indeed, Isaiah's eyes were Isaiah's eyes were burned with the vision. The lips burned with the knowledge that they were or had been unclean, and that he lived in the midst of a people with unclean lips, if you will. You see, if he was to serve God worthily, if these people of Israel and Judah were to serve God as he called them to serve, there must come a cleansing of the lips, there must come a cleansing of the heart. Yes. Understand now, when Isaiah's lips were touched with the live burning coal, he was told that his sins were forgiven. We ought to understand, not to insult anyone's intelligence, we ought to understand that burning of the lips with the coal was not an act of torture, but it was one of forgiveness. It is the moment of release from sin. Isaiah had come to the ceremony unclean, unconsecrated, unburdened. But now, Lord have mercy, at one stroke of God's forgiveness, hallelujah, My Lord. he stands clean. <coughs> he stands purged of his moral and spiritual uncleanness. His lips are fit to join in the ritual song, holy, 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 and his heart made pure is fit for the service of the king, a beneficiary of the resurrection's power of the resurrection harvest. Thank you, God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Yes. Now, the symbolism in this lesson assures us, it comforts us, it encourages us, it even empowers us to seek to understand the necessity in whatever age of submitting to God's control. Letting God purify us indeed may be painful, but we must be purified so that we can truly represent God, Amen. who is pure and holy. Amen. As Christians, beneficiaries of resurrection power, we must acknowledge, we must believe, we must receive and trust the truth that we are in the hands of a forgiving God. My Lord. And now point four, dedication. Because we are in the hands of a forgiving God, we must therefore dedicate ourselves to the task. That's right. Verse 8 teaches us Isaiah went to work. He went to a people who were fat. Keep in mind the symbolism here. Who in a time of material prosperity 
and close their ears and eyes. God, I'm in the large and in charge. I got it going on. They would not see. They would not hear. They would not listen. I'm doing it my way. I got it. I got it like this. It's about me. Me, me, me. What about me? What about me? What about me? Bottle. You know that attitude, church. Bottle. They were determined on their own doom and didn't even know. Mm -hmm. Walk with the church. Mm -hmm. It is to this doomed nation then that the prophet is to speak. They ain't going to listen to what they have to say, but he has to do what God has told him to do. Yes. And against their heedlessness, he is to hold up the glory and majesty and holiness of God. Mm -hmm. Against their pride, he pits humility. And he calls for repentance and faith and service to the one true God. Mm -hmm. To benefit from resurrection power, one must be in Jesus, not in ourselves or in a nation or other power. There is no hope unless we believe in him. You see, Jesus died for us mm -hmm. to save us from our sin. Yes. We cannot save ourselves. No. Yes. He is willing to save all those who turn from their sin and come to him. Amen. Salvation is from God alone. No amount of good work can Amen. earn it. Trust Jesus fully and let him rule your life as your sovereign Lord. Yes. God promises comfort. God promises deliverance. God promises restoration both now and in his future kingdom. Yes. Jesus Christ, the Messiah, will rule over his faithful servants, his followers in the age to come. Hope is possible because Jesus is coming back yes. to judge the world yes, he and is. to deliver the righteous in the power of his resurrection. Mm -hmm. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, God. Yes. So I challenge you, as you read Isaiah, uh -huh. imagine this strong and courageous man of God fearlessly proclaiming God's word and listen to his message in relation to your own life. His message, return, repent, be renewed. Isaiah's message, return, repent, be renewed. Then trust in God's redemption, resurrection power through Jesus Christ and rejoice. Your Savior has come and he is coming again. Question is, will you be ready? Malo. Will you be moved yes. to action in the power of his resurrection? Jesus. As God plans our tomorrows, mm -hmm. he uses what he put into us. Our gifts, our talents, our experiences, and we'll tie it all together if we're faithful to what he is doing with us today. Understand now. Before we accept God's call to speak for him to those around us, whew, we must be cleansed as Isaiah was. Amen. Confessing our sins and submitting to God's control. Amen. Indeed, letting God purify us may be painful, but we must be purified so that we can truly represent God yes. who is pure and is holy. Yes. Now think about your life. Jesus. And things that are happening today all around you. Yes. What can you control? Nothing. Will you have anticipated the world events or, or economic change, changes that are happening right now? Did it from just one year ago? From six months ago? Jesus. The reality is that none of us can plan the actual course of our lives because we cannot plan the direction of the world. That's right. We cannot know what tomorrow will bring, but because we are born again believers, we know who holds tomorrow. Amen. And we, Amen. like Isaiah, in obedience to God's vision, can try. When, when <clears throat> will we listen to God? When will we listen to God? When will we listen to God? Jesus. Must we, like Judah, go through calamities before we listen to God's word? Consider what God may be telling you yes. and obey him before time is no more. Yes. Obey him yes. before time is no more. Yes. We can be, we must be yes. the beneficiaries of resurrection power of the Lord Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. 
Will you be ready? My Lord. Will you be ready when Jesus comes? Oh. Come to Jesus mm -hmm. while you have time. Yes. He will save you. Yes, he will. He will heal you. Yes, he, he will. He will deliver you. Yes. Come to Jesus while you have time. His resurrection power mm -hmm. takes care of everything that concerns us. Mm -hmm. He will not force us to do no, anything no. whatsoever. No, he will. Life is choice driven. It Choose is. ye this day yes. who ye will serve. Mm. Come to Jesus. Yes. Come to Jesus. Yes. Come to Jesus just now. Mm. Experience, love, live and share the power of his resurrection. Father God, you are faithful. <clears throat> Lord Jesus Christ, you are forever more true. Mm. And you, Holy Ghost, are ever present, ever more. Thank you, God, for your faithfulness. Thank you, Jesus, oh, for your perfect obedience, for your perfect obedience to your Father's perfect will. And thank you, Holy Ghost, for abiding in us, guiding us in the way that we should go. Thank you now, Father God, for this time that there are those who in whatever way or listen to this message or messages of salvation around this world, that at this time, Father God, that they, they come asking, what must I do to be saved? What must I do? Why do I need to be saved? Mm. And you are listening today. There are some reasons why you need Jesus. I pulled this from one of my study sources. You need Jesus because you have a past. Mm. You have a past. You can't go back. But he can. The Bible says Jesus Christ is the same yesterday and today and forever. Yes. He can walk into those places of sin and failure, wipe the slate clean, and give you a new beginning. Three reasons why you need Jesus. Number two, because you need a friend. Jesus oh. knows the worst about you, yes, he does. yet he believes the best. Why? Because he sees you not as you are, but as you will be when he gets through with you. Yes. What a friend. Three reasons why you need Jesus, number three, because he holds the future. Yes, he does. Hallelujah. Who else are you going to trust? Jesus. In his hands, you are safe and secure today, tomorrow, and for all eternity. His word says, well, I know the plans I have for you. Plans for good and not for evil, to give you a future and a hope. In those days when you pray, I will listen. If there's one who's listening to us today, and you desire a relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ, a very simple prayer can be prayed. Lord Jesus, I invite you into my life. I believe you died for me, and that your blood pays for my sins, and provide me with the gift of eternal life. By faith, I receive that gift, and I acknowledge you as my Lord and Savior. Amen. Amen. As simple as saying, I believe what God has done. I believe what he has said. I believe that he will do exactly what he said he would do. Teach me, Lord. Guide me, Lord. Instruct me, Lord. Love me, Lord, forevermore. Very, very simple. Come to Jesus while you have time. He will save you. He will heal you. He will hear you. Come to Jesus yes. while you have time. Amen. Jesus loves you. He desires to have a relationship with you. Yes. And to give you a life full of joy and purpose. My Lord. Why do you need him in your life? Because he is eternal life. After this life on this earth is done. Yes. God, you are good, you are great, and you're worthy to be praised. And we thank you, Father. We honor you and we love you in Jesus' name. The invitation has been extended and we pray that you will answer in the way that you will know truly that you have been honest with yourself, not trying to impress anybody else, no. but you're with the Lord no. Jesus Christ as your Savior. From this day forward, from this day forward. As we come to the close of our service, I always enjoy trying to share some inspiration to keep others encouraged.
especially our youth, but for everyone, because we're all young in, in, in the Lord. Uh, but we just want to just keep you encouraged. And I was reading this um, this meditation, and one of my spirit sources said, the Lord led me to this one. And the title of it today is Christ's Blood, Not Ours. Christ's Blood, Not Ours. An old train pulled into the station loaded with Indians from the tropical jungles and plantations of Chiapa in southern Mexico. These people, mostly barefoot, had saved their pesos for years that they might once in their lives make a pilgrimage to the shrine of Guadalupe in Mexico City. There they crawled on their knees across the large courtyard to the church. Inch by painful inch, they moved along on the paved stones until their knees were torn and bleeding. In this way, they felt they could show God, and in this case Mary, how sorry they were over their sins and how hard they were trying to make up for them. They hoped God would have mercy on them and not punish them eternally. Well, how heartbreaking it is to see people torture themselves, especially when there is no need for it. But people do. Even Luther did, until he learned the Bible truth. A man is justified by faith, a part of works of the law. We have forgiveness of sin and eternal life, not because of what we do, right. but because of what Jesus did. Yes. When the Bible tells us how we are saved and said, <clears throat> this is not your own doing. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 8. It's all by grace, by God's forgiving love. Our Savior Jesus suffered for our sins so that we wouldn't have to. The best way for us to show the Lord how much this means to us is not to torture ourselves or try to make up for our sin, but okay. open our hearts to yes. Jesus and believe in him yes. who has already made up for them. Yes. And then it closes, I am trusting thee, Lord Jesus, mm -hmm. trusting only thee, trusting thee for full salvation, great and free. Do you trust him? Do you serve him? Do you know him? Do you love him? Amen. He is willing. He's able. He will do just what he said. Amen. In the fullness of his resurrection power, he said, Father, mm -hmm. into thy hands, my Lord, I commend my spirit. It is mm -hmm. Is finished. Perfectly obedient. Wow. His Father's perfect will. And because we love Him, we're concluded in the number. And it's wonderful to know that God is on your side. My Lord. It may look dark, mm. but one small light can penetrate all the darkness. Mm. That is why you look at the stars in the sky at night. Looking at that moon, just knowing that God, God is watching over us. But error, be not dismayed, but every time, God will. will take care of you. Thank you for being with us today. And we're just so prayerful for the time we have now. But it's going to be a great, great gift that morning when we can come back and feel the pews to God's glory. It's coming, church. Amen. But as long as you feel the pews of your soul, the word of God and share with someone, do something good for someone today. Not to impress anybody, but just tell them that God loves them and that you love them too, the love of the Lord. Yeah. And just enjoy the great and wonderful things God has in store for you. It's not through yet. It ain't over to God said it's over. And so we're thankful. We give God glory. We honor him and we love him on this his holy day. Shall we stand and be dismissed? God, we thank you. We thank you. Lord, we thank you for providing for our daily needs. Thank you, Father God, for protecting us from danger. Thank you for guiding us in the holiness and goodness. And as we go about what we're doing to do for the rest of this day, God, we thank you for allowing us this time for such a time as this. And as we go our separate ways, Lord, we take the Lord with us. And we continue to be your light, your word, your living example of love in this world. And now to him who is able to keep you from falling, to present you falling before the throne of his glory with everlasting joy, 
We say, go in peace and curse on and do the same. God loves you and so do I. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. What more can we do? What more can we do than what God has already done? 